I'm Fiona and I am living proof. Everything about ME says there's no hope, there's no cure, there's, I think they say something like 5% of people recover. I, I lived with a lot of suicidal feelings because there was a sense of why, uh, how can I, how can I live like this, how can I be happy? I started experiencing symptoms when I was 23 years old. I felt very run down and completely exhausted. I kept catching viruses over and over again. I was sleeping and sleeping and I wasn't feeling better. I felt, quite often I felt sick. I was just in such severe pain and I felt so bad. Quite often I felt just um, like I couldn't bear to be around people talking. It just sort of, spiralled in the sense that I, I couldn't, I had to give up exercising completely. It was this very heavy fatigue. It doesn't matter how much you rest, you don't feel well. I would feel like I was dying sometimes, actually. It was that bad. I remember lying in bed in the middle of the night and thinking, I feel so ill, I can't bear it. I can't tolerate feeling like this. It was so intense. ME is a condition that causes extreme exhaustion that gets much worse after doing anything and doesn't improve with rest. The ME took everything away from me. It ruined my life for 14 years. I thought I was never going to get better. There was a sense of if I go to the doctor and I say, well, I feel really terrible this week, they didn't have any answers. They weren't going to know what to do. Um, and that was profoundly frightening, actually. I was very, very scared and I didn't feel safe in the world as somebody who, you know, if you need to use a wheelchair, if you need to um, stop and take rest. You just want your daughter to be well. And certainly it is... It's been a big part of our life. Well, we've wept many tears for the loss of those years. So. I was getting desperate. And I remember thinking, I, I, I've got to sort this out. I can't go, like, go through life like this. When I did this programme, it was very much um, targeted at people with pain. And as soon as I started doing it, I thought, I'm gonna tell myself I'm doing it for my pain, but I want the ME to go. And I thought, if I'm somebody, well, as soon as these theories started resonating, I thought, if my body is capable of generating severe pain, it must be possible that it's capable of generating fatigue as well, and all these other symptoms. It was all theories that I would have felt very threatened by a few years before and I would have felt very much like this is this is ridiculous your brain can't make you that ill it's not possible the core of these theories is about uh, neural networks neural pathways and um, maybe dismantling old pathways that uh, your brain feels unsafe it generates the symptoms pain and other symptoms can actually be a warning signal the key was building a sense of safety uh, within yourself, understanding that if you're getting symptoms, that's your own nervous system trying to signal that it doesn't feel safe and working out, well, why does it not feel safe? What has made it feel unsafe? Reassuring yourself that you are safe. I, I think that I didn't have to look very hard in the sense of just finding examples of things that would have made me feel uh, unsafe and, and put me into um, yeah, maybe just kind of chronic background stress that you're not necessarily thinking about. And I think that was the really key thing to say that it's very important to look at things that um, maybe have been uh, threatening and frightening, but you don't have to find very, very big things. It doesn't have to have been sort of massive traumatic things. One of the things that uh, really resonated for me was about perfectionism and um, being prone to anxiety and overthinking. 
there is a link between, if you are somebody who worries a lot, if you are a perfectionist, there's a link between that and your brain starting to generate symptoms when it doesn't feel okay. There were various exercises along the lines of um, a little bit of meditation, some writing exercises, trying to, trying to tap into your own feelings and lots of education around maybe what your brain was having to express through these symptoms. You're building new networks of, of maybe uh, listening to your own feelings and writing them down rather than your brain needing to generate the symptoms. Having a focus on the present moment, watching my own thoughts. If my thoughts were running away and there was a lot of panic and there was a lot of fear, it was about saying, can I sit back and observe that and watch what my brain is doing, but actually say to myself, that's just a thought, it's not real. If you get variation in your symptoms, then that is evidence that your brain is involved in generating a degree of those symptoms. And it doesn't matter what medical condition you have and what symptoms, if you have up, you know, good days and bad days, there is an element of those symptoms being neuroplastic. It was absolutely groundbreaking for me to realize that. the advice was to write a list of all the things that you have been able to do on better days. And there is your evidence for, for how well and healthy your body is. The day that my parents were flying back and I'd written to them and I'd said, look, I just want you to know coming back that I think maybe that I'm getting better. and." Um, I think maybe this is real and I don't want to make too much of a fuss about it in case it's not but I think <laughs> I think um I think maybe I'm better and, and um so they were flying back and there was um there was a walk that they loved and um this walk was on my local forest and um and they'd taken my dog there and she they were always coming back saying oh she loves it there it's like her favorite walk and i couldn't i couldn't go we used to go in the car and drive through the forest so that i could get a, a glimpse of it but i couldn't walk there and it was the day they were flying back and i thought i i knew there was this huge hill there and i thought i'm gonna go and do that hill but i thought if i get up that hill i know i'm well it's terrifying it was really frightening I just can't believe it. I thought this was such a steep hill. This to me was absolutely incredibly daunting. And it's like, it's the tiniest little slope now. And, um, oh my God, I thought it was just, so, I couldn't believe how steep it was. And I, I was looking at it thinking, how the hell am I gonna get back up? And I'm looking at it now and it's like, it's so not steep. This was just massive. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by that. Look at it, it's like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe it. This is like the tiniest hill in the world. This is so funny. God, I can't believe that. I drove here with my dog and I got to this point and this hill just seemed so long and so daunting. And I thought, I'm going to walk down and I picked, I think in my mind, I sort of thought, that's how far I'm going to go. And then it's a really steep hill getting back up. And if I can do that, I know absolutely once and for all, I can't keep saying to myself, well, maybe, maybe this isn't real. I thought, no, I need to do this. And it was so intimidating. I didn't know in terms of my heart rate, I didn't know what it was going to do. I didn't know if I was fit enough um, just to get back up the hill. And I got all the way down there and I remember thinking, I'm not crashing and I'm okay and I feel like I could keep going. And I thought, no, I, I really mustn't go too far because it will, be, it will be too steep to get back up. So I started walking back up and I wasn't getting any symptoms and I was going uphill. And I just sort of thought, I was sitting here going, no, this is real. I can do whatever I want. I can actually, I can do some proper walks. I can go anywhere. And maybe it was a moment of like, well, maybe I can ride my bike and maybe I can go on holiday, and maybe I can... <laughs> Just maybe, maybe I can do whatever I want, and that's like... I don't have to worry anymore, I'm gonna be okay. <laughs>
I was so offended by the idea of anybody making these kind of claims to shifting. I mean, my whole world turned upside down because I was suddenly sitting here going, no, I, I, I've, I've looked at the science and I understand very deeply that your own brain can make you that ill. I didn't think it was possible to get better. And I looked at these kind of theories and thought there's no way, there's no way I will recover. And I was so sure about that. And I was wrong. And I think that I would say to anybody, nobody can guarantee that you're going to recover completely if you use these theories. But even if you get an improvement, it's worth it. I just thought this is amazing. This is life changing. We got back our daughter, and that was the most extraordinary thing after 15 years of seeing a very, at times, very ill girl. We got our daughter back. I feel completely fit and well. Um, I bought myself a new bike. I, I do wild swimming, I go out swimming in the local river. I've been up some mountains in Scotland, and I go to salsa dance class and I, I feel like you know the, the thing for me that's different is I can take some exercise one day and then I can take more exercise the next day and I can keep going I don't have to have any rest period and I'm able to work and I'm studying part-time and um, I feel like there's there's no restrictions on me at all I'm just free to enjoy my my good health <laughs> <laughs>